What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown, and this is Heresy Financial. Taiwan might be the biggest black swan risk of 2022. I say this because it is wrapped up at the center of both political, geopolitical tensions and the global economy. Not only that, it is the epicenter of a reigning global power and a rising global power, the US and China. So today we are going to look at number one, why Taiwan is so important to both nations. Number two, what either country is likely to do about it. And number three, why it means that Taiwan stocks might be the best short in the near future. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so as you know, with a video like this, I have to give a couple disclaimers. Number one, it's not advice. Number two, obviously none of this is guaranteed. I'm looking at the risk to reward opportunity here, and it looks like a fantastic opportunity to me. Number three, there is a lot of complexity when you're talking about a subject like this, even the fact that I have to be careful with the words that I use when I'm talking about Ch Taiwan and China and uh, independence and takeover, because depending on where you are in the world, where you're from, you have very strong opinions about these things. And so I am not attempting to take any sides here, especially politically regarding what's happening in Taiwan. Really what I'm only trying to point out is the fantastic risk to reward opportunity with shorting Taiwan stocks. So with that in mind, considering both the risk and the current valuations on Taiwan stocks, it looks like it is priced perfectly to be viewed as a black swan event for 2022. And remember, black swan one is not something that you cannot predict, something that's unpredictable inherently. A black swan is something that's predictable, but just considered so unlikely as to be basically impossible. And when we look at the fact that Taiwanese stocks are basically at all-time highs, we're going to take a look at EWT here. This is an ETF. This is the iShares Taiwan ETF. We can see here it's basically at all-time highs, which means at least the market is pricing in the risk of something unexpected happening at basically zero. And as we'll see in the rest of this video, the risk is much higher than zero. So number one, why is Taiwan so important? Well, number one, it's important to the entire global economy because basically all semiconductors come out of Taiwan. And we've seen over the last year and a half how crucial semiconductors are to just the entire global supply chain. One of the main bottlenecks is the new supply of trucks, semi-trucks, cars are not coming onto the market. Transportation is getting crippled and transportation is the backbone of the uh, global supply chains. Because if you can't move stuff from one place to another, that's what supply chains are, right? And so we can see how semiconductors are at the heart of global supply chains. Not only that, but semiconductors are also at the heart of national security because all military equipment needs semiconductors. So if you have a supply chain issue, if you have a bottleneck that prevents you from getting a part that goes into your military equipment, suddenly that turns into a national security issue. So that's why Taiwan is important from the United States perspective, but why is it important from the Chinese perspective? Well, that is a big part of it, but it goes deeper than that in the eyes of China. See, they view Taiwan as part of China already, and they view full reunification of Taiwan with China as something that is number one, they stated this publicly, number one, inevitable, just a part of the arc of history. Number two, they view it as crucial to the rejuvenation of China, to the rise of China, to the eventual reign of China as the global superpower on earth. Now, given the importance of Taiwan to both sides, the United States and China, you'd expect that both sides would kind of be escalating, especially militarily in the region. And uh, it, instead, we see some odd things happening. Number one, we do see a lot of military buildup in the area by China, especially over the last couple of months. You've seen a lot of new rhetoric, a lot of videos. You've seen a lot of military equipment, everything moving into that region. This has gotten it to the point where now now many experts are questioning whether in that region, the United States or China has the military advantage. Yes, globally, the United States by far still has the military advantage, but just in that region, now it is questionable. They've gone so far as to start saying publicly, China saying publicly, that if Taiwan does not surrender peacefully when they decide to advance, they will take them by force. And at this point, it doesn't seem like the messaging that the United States is sending out is that 
that they're going to do much about it. Take, for example, a recent summit, Biden's Summit for Democracy, on December 12th, just a few weeks ago. During the presentation of a Taiwanese minister, she introduced a slide with a map on it. And this map had Taiwan as a separate color than all of the nations around it, which indicated sovereignty and different borders from Taiwan and China. And immediately, remember, this is Biden's Summit for Democracy, immediately, her video feed was cut off. Now, technical errors were blamed and they uh, publicly said it had nothing to do with the map, that there were just, there was confusion about which video feed was on and which one was not. But this is not the only time something like this has happened. Just uh, about a year and a half ago, at the beginning of 2020, when uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization, they were uh, doing a live stream, a video conference call, and uh, somebody may asked a question about Taiwan. The WHO representative acted like he did did not hear the question. And then when pressed further about it, when asked again, he ended the call. Because basically even uttering the words Taiwan and acting as if it is a country or making any indication that it has any sort of independence would uh, violate contracts and agreements that people have with China. Now, again, I'm not making any statements about who is right, who is wrong, what should be done or shouldn't be done here. What I am saying is these things have happened and they are all signals of escalating tension around this one area. So from China's perspective, it's a matter of when, not a matter of if, they will fully take over Taiwan. From the United States perspective, it looks like there is a soft signal being sent out that China should not try this, but there's also a soft signal being sent out that we'll do nothing about it if they try. Now imagine for a second if conflict does arise. From China's perspective, the longer it takes, the better. China's military is growing and becoming more advanced much faster than the United States military is. We still have the total advantage, but they're catching up quick. So the longer it takes for a military challenge or a military conflict to arise, the better for China and the worse for the United States. Similarly, if China decided tomorrow to invade Taiwan, then there are economic things that the United States could do. We could sanction them. They still rely heavily on the dollar. And given the fact that they're heavily de-dollarizing and moving away from commerce with the dollar, the longer, again, the longer it takes, the better for China, the worse for the United States. And then finally, the fact that it takes four, five, six years for new factories to be built that can produce semiconductors. There's a bunch being built in Arizona right now. The, again, if they move on Taiwan right now, there is a bigger chance that the United States will step in to defend it because we're so reliant on them from a national security perspective versus if it happens in two, three, four, five years, then it might not matter because we might spend a lot of money over the next couple of years in trying to develop our own technology fabrication uh, semiconductor fabrication facilities here. Now, given all this information, remember what happened in 2020. When China fully took over Hong Kong, what happened? Absolutely nothing. The United States did zero. Now take a look at this chart, which is Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index price to book ratio. It is trading, the entire index is trading below book value. Now look carefully at the time frames there. You can see that this is not something that just happened in 2020 when the takeover occurred. This is something that's been building and declining for a while there. But take a look at just what the index price did. We can look at this ETF EWH, that's the iShares Hong Kong ETF. You can see that when the takeover occurred, there was a massive hit, there was a rebound, but it's since suffered. Now I want you to take a look at EWT. This is the iShares Taiwan ETF. You can see here that it is basically trading at all time highs, meaning that the market has priced in basically no risk of something that China views as inevitable. And if it happens, it's very likely that the equity markets there take the same sort of hit that we've seen in Hong Kong. And this is whether or not the United States tries to step in. If they do, and we have a military conflict, it could actually turn out much worse. So given the fact that uh, Taiwan is basically trading at all time highs, this looks like one of the best setups for a short opportunity that I've seen in a very long time. Again, it's not trading advice. I could be totally wrong. And that's why I play shorts with puts. I don't like to short things because if you just go out and short it, it can go up an infinite amount. It can gap up overnight. It's very dangerous to have a, uh, a, a trade that has unlimited loss potential and limited gain potential. So if you don't know how to use options, check out my options courses in the description below, but I like to use puts and option trades in order to short things. Now remember, 
where the devil's advocate, kind of the counter argument that I presented earlier is that time is on China's side here. The longer they wait, the better. The longer they wait, the more they can de-dollarize and eliminate the risk of sanctions or economic suffering as a result of making this move and kind of force the United States into making a decision on whether they want to use military action. Further, the longer China waits, the stronger their military gets, especially in that region, which would make uh, America's decision to use military action even less likely. Further, it gives the United States more time to kind of separate from Taiwan and de-link from uh, that being such a big bottleneck to our national security and our supply chains. In any case, the odds of conflict escalating in Taiwan around that region are massive compared to the risks that the market is pricing in. And that's why it looks like a, such a great short opportunity to me. And finally, if you want two great resources on the conflict that's going on between China and the United States right now that also talks about what's going on in Taiwan, I highly recommend Ray Dalio's new book, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, and Graham Allison's book, Destined for War. I've got both of those linked in the description below. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.